a music supervisor works on a range of different music related tasks for a production. So you can work with um, producers, directors, agencies and advertisements, video games, film and television to do creative and more admin related, very admin heavy stuff um, for a production. For example, you can know, uh, a, the production may know what song they want to use. So you have to go through the legal process of getting the rights for that song so that they can legally use it in the production. On the creative side, you have the opportunity to uh, search for different songs to pitch them to be used within scenes of whatever project you're working on, which is mostly the really exciting part, but again, it is quite admin heavy in having to find out who owns what pieces of the song and to make sure everybody is approved for the terms and fees so that you can legally use it within a production. So on the client side, a music supervisor can work with a number of different stakeholders within a production. So that can be the director, the producer, if it's an advertisement, it could be the agency or the brand and any other stakeholders within these different various projects that you're working on. On the supply side, you're looking at uh, musicians of various forms. You can work with artists directly, you can work with labels, publishers, sync agents, um, I work with artist managers, and anybody in between that represents music. Clearing the rights to a song means that you're getting the legal um, approval to use the song within a production. There's two parts to every song. There's the master, which is the recording, and the publishing, which is the songwriting. So that can be um, thought of as 200% that makes up one song. You have various rights holders that you have to reach out in order to do that. For example, you can have a pop song, which generally some, especially higher level ones, have multiple uh, songwriters on it. So you have to reach out for the master as well as all the individual pieces of a publishing. So if there's seven different writers, you have to reach out to seven different stakeholders to make sure that they all know the terms and they approve the use. If you're missing even one piece of that, then you're not um, legally able to use the song within it, which is why it's really important to know who owns what and to get all the information from the musicians that you're working with so that you can make sure that you are fully cleared legally to use a song within a production. So there's sort of two different ways that you can go about obtaining music. Um, the first one would be when you receive a brief. And so a brief would be from your production in terms of what they're looking for, what the themes are, what type of music, is it hip hop, is it R&B, is it pop? Do you need something that's upbeat, down tempo? Are you looking for a specific theme? Should it be romantic or should it be more general? Are we looking to start a party? And you use all those details and then you send it out to your trusted partner. So that will be labels, publishers, artist managers, different representatives of music. And then they send you back, based on your details, different songs for you to select. So you sort of sift through all those options and then you present those to your client. So it's more of a straightforward stream and you have an idea of what um, you're working with and what your parameters are. The second option that you can look at for finding music is what I think is the most exciting part of the job, which is just searching for music. I search for music within my own database of all the different songs that I get sent from my various partners, as well as um, start looking online. Looking online is one of my favorite ways of doing it. I look at different blogs, I look at um, any songs that are mentioned within streaming platforms or on social media. I ask friends, I sort of keep my ears open as much as I can to the world around me and all the sounds that are in it to try to get inspiration or find different things that I wouldn't have been able to find just through my own partners. So there's two different ways of looking at it, but the primary thing is for an artist to be able to be found, to be present within a representative sending your music out or having an online presence because there's music supervisors who are combing the internet always looking to find something new. Some music supervisors are open to solicitations from anybody. I try to be as open as I can. It also does mean that my inbox gets completely flooded and I can't get back to everybody, but I do as much as I can. Um, but the way that you're going to best be received in reaching, out, sorry, in reaching out to a music supervisor is by having an email with a lot of information in it and an email that is very respectful. You get a huge range of different types of communications and some are more well received than others. The information that I always look for is who's reaching out to me, 
what their background is, what city they're from, a little bit about their bio. I don't need anything uh, too large. It should be brief because I won't be able to get through everything. Um, and then an opportunity for me to stream and download your music. It's important that I have the option to stream and download because some people um, will save the music and hold it for a rainy day and other people will listen to it. And if it's not a fit for them in the moment, then they'll just move on and not download the music because we have a lot of different files. It takes up a lot of space within our hard drive. So some people are a bit more selective in what they download. So the option of having both just sets you up. If you just have streaming, then if we are interested in the song, it means an extra step email in order to obtain the song. And sometimes we're moving at really fast timelines so we don't have the opportunity to reach back out, wait for the artist to answer in order to get that file. It can be an opportunity loss, so you want to make sure that you have as much information within the first email that you send. Another really important thing to have there is information on who owns what within the song. Do we need to reach out to a label or a publisher in, er in order to obtain the rights, or can it all be done with you? It means that we're going to know whether this is going to be an expensive song or a lower price song, whether it's going to be a one email or two email correspondence in order to clear the rights and obtain the legal right to use the song within a production. So within that email, there needs to be quite a bit of information on how we work with you and who you are, as well as the music. If you're just sending the music, it can be an opportunity loss because we need to know where you fall within our working relationship. Um, people who I work best with are ones who have all that information. And if I ask questions, answer all the questions that I ask, get back to me in a timely fashion. And also, uh, when you're following up, it's important to follow up when you have new music. Following up just to see if I've listened um, isn't the best way to get my attention because I'm quite busy and there's a lot of different things going on in my personal life as well as my professional life that maybe I just didn't get the opportunity. But the way to stay on top of things is to present me with new music so then I can remember, oh, this is what the sound is. Do I have something that I'm working on right now where this can fit? It's always just the best way to, to jog my memory and to present yourself as an artist. In don'ts when sending an email or corresponding with a music supervisor, um, don't demand that you be licensed. I have people who are very um, passionate about how they interact with me about wanting to be licensed. Um, multiple follow-ups is also a don't, especially when you're not providing new information. Just checking on to see if I've listened to it. I've had people who've also reached out on various platforms in order to try to get in touch with me. Um, if you do end up getting access to my phone number, um, that is not appropriate to use. On social media, I'm just sending memes to my friends, so please don't reach out within social media, especially because what we do is legal. So it's not, um, it's not going to be done over a social media platform. That's not how I do business. That's not how I prefer to communicate with people. That is a personal platform for me. Don't just send uh, a music link without any information. I need to know who you are. I need to know the information about how to use this music. So it, if it is something that I'm excited about, we can start going through the paces and I can see how to work with you. It just shows that you are a willing partner to work with and that I'm going to get all the information that I need. If there's any sort of inkling that I get that this is going to be a tough relationship, the relationship is extremely important because we need to have trust between each other that I'm not going to go down that path if I'm seeing that there's already strain in the relationship and we haven't even started. When musicians are making music for sync, I think the most important thing is establishing the splits. The splits are the different um, ownership of the song. And it's important to have that 
right when you're finished your session or even before you get into the studio so that you have an understanding of who owns what as that music starts to make its way into the world. It could be that you're splitting just the publishing rights or you're splitting the master and the publishing. But those are the inf pieces of information that are required for your music to be used within sync because we need to make sure that we clear the rights with all those different rights holders and stakeholders within the song. I find that it's most important to do that before a song is released because then you're not scrambling at the end and making the splits once money sort of come into the equation. It's a better relationship between you and the supervisor and should there be any issues between you and the person that you made music with, it's better to settle that ahead of time than when you're on the clock with a music supervisor who's waiting to get that information. I think there's a lot of opportunities for up-and-coming artists within sync uh, because we're always excited to have new music within our productions. It also has the opportunity to be cost savings for us because we're able to fit them on a lower level within our budget, which means there's a lot more opportunities to place them than there is for, say, top-tier big artists, which require bigger budgets. We're always trying to think of the smaller moments and the bigger moments. It doesn't mean that um, up-and-coming artists are only used within smaller moments, but the way that we look at a budget and balance it, we need higher tiered artists and tiered artists that are just starting out. So I think there's a lot of opportunities for up-and-coming artists, and we get most excited about that. I know that I do because it really contributes directly to their career. I've had artists that I work with who find out they're pregnant while we're going through a sink and all that money's going towards them or we're able to take out their partner on a date because they had a sink go through. So I find it especially exciting to work with up and coming artists because there is a lot of opportunity for them to be discovered by new audiences within the sink world. I don't think that there are specific genres that have a stronger opportunity than um, others for sync. There is a lot of different range of projects that we work on which require different sounds. So I can be in a horror headspace and looking for ominous music and then be in a party scene and looking for something that's upbeat. Say we're going to a specific type of restaurant. Okay, what is the environment? What type of music that we're looking for? And all of this can happen within the same production. So there isn't a limit to the genres that we're looking at. So it's really nice for me to get different types of genres and put them in my back pocket for when the opportunity comes up. One thing that I will note is that we have a lot of opportunity for music that is dynamic and upbeat. I think that a lot of people think of the moments in sync that are very cinematic or emotional. And those are big moments and very memorable moments, but we also have a ton of moments in between where we need to find the pacing within a scene. Or in a commercial, and we're having 30 second commercial, we're going from frame to frame to frame. So that means there should be a lot of different changes within the music. I also think that it's a great opportunity for musicians to uh, really get creative and look at different ways of expressing their art. There's a lot of very emotional and sad music out, but how do you turn that on its head and have a sort of sad message, but can you present that in an upbeat way, make it more exciting? We also have a lot of music that's centered around relationships. Well, what is another way that we can look at it? Can it be just the joyful part of being in a relationship and feeling great about yourself, or can it be in an angry part about being angry with your partner, but we're focused on not just solely the relationship. So I think it's really important to not be so literal when you're creating music and really start to look outside of the box at what you can create. So there is a difference between doing music supervision for TV, film, and ads. I find that uh, one piece of it is timing. Ads are pretty quick. Um, we are working on shorter schedules, and um, when there's brands related, there are different guidelines that we have to abide by than we look at in the film and TV space. So within ads, it's really important that I move quickly and have partners that I can um, trust and get answers from really speedy. That's a big piece of that. We also look at different types of terms of clearance. We have shorter durations in market, so that is something that I will include when I reach out to um, negotiate rights. On the film, TV, and long format side, we have generally longer lead times because it can be a year or two years. So you may hear from me and it could be a long time before I reach back out, but 
that opportunity doesn't mean that it's gone. It just takes a lot longer time for those types of formats. Another piece of that as well is when we're doing the clearances, the terms look a little bit different. You might have language such as in perpetuity. In perpetuity means forever. So if we're looking at the duration and market for those long format, those are going to be in market forever. You know, we have a film that comes out, we're not going to revisit those terms and negotiate those terms over and over and over again. So there is some differences in language on the clearance side, um, as well as things that we're looking at in timelines. Creative pitching refers to when you're sending your music to a music supervisor. We get a lot of music as music supervisors from a bunch of different resources. So we're downloading them and adding them to our database. Sometimes there's additional labeling I add onto it. But when you have a lot of good metadata, which is the information within the file, then you set yourself up for success. So that means when I download that file, it should make sure that you maintain your artist's name, the title of the song, um, if it's important to have the album, then the album as well, and also some information of contact. So it could be the publisher that you work with, or it could be your artist manager, or it could be your information yourself, so that it's all contained within that one file. That one file will bounce around between me and producers, directors, and editors, and all these different people that I work with, but if we lose a piece of that file and I'm not able to ladder that back to who owns it, then I can't present that to my clients because I won't be able to find out who owns it. They fall in love with it, I can't have it, that's just not gonna be fun for me. So it's really important that you have all that information within the file because that is your calling card. I also find that MP3s hold more information than WAV files. So if you're sending music, send them in both forms or just send the MP3 file and then we'll follow up and ask for a WAV file once we're ready to actually put something into production. MP3 files, I don't know why, I don't know anything about technology, but those hold metadata a lot better than WAV files. So the best possible advice I can give to people who are starting out is to learn uh, a little bit about a lot of pieces of the music industry. There's a lot of different jobs within the music industry that you don't know about, and little pieces that might be more exciting to you than what you already know. It's also a way of moving throughout the industry to finding what your perfect career is, and so I think it's really important that you try out different things, talk to different people in different parts of the industry to sort of get an idea of the way of the land. I think it's especially important in um, a country such as Canada because there's not as many positions available. We're a lot smaller country than say the US, so there might be different opportunities that aren't as straightforward. And each opportunity leads you to another. So you can bounce around, but as long as you're excited about the work that you're doing and willing to learn, then you can find what the best fit is for you.